My name is Elizabeth Strawn. I'm a pediatrics resident at Duke University, and today I'll be going through the topic of RSV and bronchiolitis, which is a very common condition in the pediatric population. Our learning objectives for today will be to define bronchiolitis, discuss RSV specifically and its contribution to bronchiolitis, outline some diagnostic criteria, and review management and prevention strategies. So first of all, what is bronchiolitis? Bronchiolitis is simply a lower respiratory infection characterized by inflammation, edema, and necrosis of the epithelial lining of small airways. This increases sputum production and can occasionally lead to bronchospasm. Uh, it's the most common lower respiratory tract infection in infants and young children. Specifically, the virus of RSV, or respiratory syncytial virus, infects the epithelial cell lining in small airways and is the most common virus associated with the above-mentioned disease process of bronchiolitis. RSV is an enveloped single-stranded RNA virus, and 90% of children are infected within the first two years of their life. Of course, our next question to consider is who is going to get this infection. So most inpatient admissions are for patients who are less than one year of age. There are certain risk factors for severe RSV disease processes, including some comorbidities like congenital heart disease, bronchopulmonary dysplasia, often associated with premature birth, cystic fibrosis or other chronic lung diseases, immunodeficiency, congenital anomalies, and again, as we mentioned, prematurity. Interestingly, this disease process does have a seasonal occurrence with most infections occurring in midwinter from January to March in the United States. Diagnosis is solely a clinical diagnosis. You base your diagnosis on a good history and physical exam. Our history could include symptoms including rhinitis, tachypnea, wheezing, cough, crackles on your physical exam, or the use of accessory muscles or nasal flaring during your exam as well. You also want to assess risk factors for severe disease, as we mentioned on the previous slide, including prematurity, age less than 12 weeks at the time of presentation, cardiac disease, or immunosuppression. Chest x-rays are only useful to rule out other diagnoses if you're considering other processes like pneumonia or asthma. Many times an RSV antigen may be sent. This is obtained from a nasal swab but it rarely alters the clinical management of your patient. To demonstrate a chest x-ray for bronchiolitis, you can see that there are kind of nonspecific bilateral densities and some atelectasis in the right upper lobe. This is a chest x-ray that's pretty classic for bronchiolitis. But again, this is not necessary for your diagnosis. Treatment strategies are varied. Generally, most of our care is supportive. A quarter of infants may respond transiently to bronchodilators, but this is not a required treatment. You may want to try this treatment and then discontinue use of it if it's not helpful. Corticosteroids, which are thought to decrease the inflammation, as you may see in patients with bronchospasm, are not effective in this disease process. Antiviral agents will not effectively treat RSV. An antibacterial agent should only be considered if a, bacteria, if a concurrent bacterial infection is suspected. In general, again, supportive management is the most common method of treatment that we'll use, including oxygen and IV fluids. Again, supportive care may require hospitalization. Some factors to consider are the ability of the infant to feed orally given the degree of tachypnea, Generally, we'll use a rule of greater than 60 times a minute for a respiratory rate to switch over to IV fluids instead of oral fluid intake. Also, the ability of the infant to maintain O2 saturations greater than 90% is also a factor in considering whether or not to hospitalize a patient. And, of course, we should consider underlying comorbidities that increase the risk of severe disease. Prevention is key. As this is an infectious process, uh, education about transmission of respiratory infections within the family, good hand washing. Some patients may receive prophylaxis uh, for children with chronic lung disease. This is a vaccine that can be given on an outpatient basis to prevent patients at high risk from acquiring the infection. And avoiding secondhand smoke exposure is also helpful. 
In summary, bronchiolitis is a very common lower respiratory tract infection, most often caused by a virus. This is usually RSV. Patients who are at risk for developing severe disease include those with chronic cardiopulmonary diseases, premature infants, or patients who are suffering from conditions that cause them to be immunosuppressed. The diagnosis is made on basis of history and physical exam, and our treatment measures generally include supportive measures, although a trial of bronchodilators may be used. Prevention is key and is based on vaccination against RSV for at-risk patients and standard hand-washing precautions. Here are some references to review if you have any more questions. And thank you so much for your time today.